Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel and welcome also to episode five of my midweek sewing chat. And I think I said before, I'm really enjoying doing this little midweek sewing chat series. Um, I just pop on in the middle of the week and share a little bit about what I'm wearing and what I'm up to on the sewing front and sometimes a bit about my ongoing knitting projects as well and just a bit of general chat. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying popping on and catching up with you guys and just taking stock of where I am on the crafting front. So thanks so much for joining me for another episode. So today is Tuesday, it's Tuesday morning. It's about half past 10 in the morning. This morning, as usual, I've done the school run, dropped my children at school. I went for a run, which is quite nice. The weather's quite nice for a run. I went on the weekend. It was lovely and sunny. I put my sunglasses and went out and the heavens opened and I was pretty bedraggled when I got back. But today it was nice. It wasn't too sunny. It was a good day for a little run around the neighbourhood. So that was nice. I've got back. I've done a few chores and I'm hoping to get a bit of sewing done in a bit. But I thought I'd pop on first and share yeah, what I'm wearing and what I'm up to at the moment. So first of all, what I'm wearing today, well, it's actually the weather's getting a bit milder here at the moment. It definitely feels like spring is on the way, which is lovely. So I've got on today a it's ready to wear just long sleeve black top with a scoop neck, which kind of reminds me quite a lot of the Agnes top by Tilly the Buttons. But this is a very old one I got before I started making clothes. But it's nice to know if this one ever wears out, I can reproduce it probably quite similarly using the Agnes top pattern. But I'm wearing a pinafore, um, which I did make myself. And this pinafore is a hack of this pattern here, which is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. It's a really nice, um, simple pattern by True Bias for a woven um, cami top. It's got this nice deep v-neck at the front and back and these spaghetti straps and it's quite a straight boxy fit. And it's got a good size range on this pattern too. I've got the um, 0 to 18 size range, US 0 to 18. But I think there's also a US 14 to 30 range too which is pretty much the same top but with a couple of different features. It's got bust starts and slightly wider straps. But I made my version into a pinafore and um, I'll just stand up so you can see a little bit. I, you can see here, I am um, cropped off the Ogden cami top, a just kind of empire line, I guess I'd say. And then I added on two squares to make a skirt and gathered them in to make a little gathered skirt pinafore. And it's got pockets too. And when I did it, I widened the straps slightly from the pattern because I thought that would look better for pinafore than little spaghetti straps um, and I've got a, the bodice fit is lined so it's lined and then I sort of slip stitched it in place along the skirt um, line too so yeah the bodice and the seams there are fully enclosed so it's quite a neat finish on the inside and I made mine using this really lovely rifle and paper coat cotton fabric I'll stand up a little bit so you can see I think it's called hawthorn it's really pretty lots of sort of woodland style floral um designs on it in really pretty colours with a black base. I think there's a navy base available of this too. I guess it's like a quilting weight cotton, so it's perfect for a pinafore because it's got a bit of weight to it, it's not too floaty. Um, and it's really nice and comfy to wear. It's a little bit oversized. I actually sized up one size from my measurements on the Ogden Cami pattern when I was making this pinafore because I wanted to be able to layer tops underneath. So I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. I really enjoy wearing this one. And I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks and see what length I cut it. I kind of went for just above the knee on it. But yeah, it's a nice one to wear and I enjoy layering up with different tops. I quite like it with a white t-shirt too. Or I've also worn it with a, um, a Freya top, so like a high neck top as well. Um, yes, yeah, so it works quite well with quite a few things in my wardrobe. So that's what I'm wearing today. And then I've got a few crafty projects ongoing at the moment that I've got to share with you. The first one is one... It was a bit, I kind of made on a bit of a whim actually. I got a bit sidetracked from what I was planning in the last week with this one. So my daughter's birthday is coming up in a few weeks time and I wanted to kind of make it feel a little bit birthday and special in the house when she wakes up on her birthday but she's not a big fan of balloons. She doesn't like the noise if they bang so yeah she's not a big fan as some children aren't. So I began thinking how I could decorate the house a little bit to still make it feel a bit different to your average day and I thought I might give, give making some bunting a go. And I've never made bunting before. I've always thought it's a really lovely thing, bunting, when you see like people decorating their garden fences with it and things. I always thought it was really nice. I don't know whether I've never tried it before. I somehow thought it was going to be trickier than it was. I think that probably stems from before I started sewing. And since I've started sewing, I haven't really thought about it so much since. But I decided I'd give some bunting a go. So I've kind of got into it and it sewed up really quickly. And I made this bunting. I kind of wanted to make it using things I already had rather than buying new fabric. So I had a little look around the house and I don't have a lot of sort of quilting cotton type cotton scraps left over. 
I did find my daughter's old cot bed duvet cover and pillow cover. We still had those in the airing cupboard because I thought they were quite pretty. So I think I'd always kept them thinking I might be able to do something with them. And I thought they're really nice to turn into bunting. So I turned them into some bunting. Well, I think I turned one duvet case and one pillowcase into bunting. So I've still got some left because we had two lots of them. And here it is, the bunting I made for my daughter for her birthday. So it's quite a pretty design. It's a kind of, the duvet cover weight, so kind of quilting weight, I guess, cotton fabric. It's hard to see, it's kind of pale pink colour. Oh, there, you can see a bit better back there. With these little pink roses on. Um, and then I just used some double fold bias, bias tape. I got that from Amazon because I didn't have anything in my stash suitable and I thought it was going to be quite a lot to make um, all that bias binding myself and I didn't really have any suitable fabric to make so much in a kind of a simple plain colour. So yeah, I bought the bias binding and so I used this fabric but yeah this is the bunting so yeah it's just quite a lot of fun to make really actually. It was quite quick and it was quite sort of um, quite repetitive I guess. It was quite satisfying once you get into cutting the pieces up and then sewing them up. It's kind of like a batch sewing project. Um, and um, oh yeah, and I use my rotary cutter to cut these out. I'm not usually a big fan of the rotary cutter. Generally when I'm doing dressmaking, I prefer to use my scissors to cut things out, but it was very satisfying with the rotary cutter just being able to do th three nice clear lines to cut out the triangles. So yeah, it came together really nicely. I sew the triangles together, um, right sides together, um, sort of clip the corner a little bit so it kind of could get a fairly sharp little point. Then I sort of um, basted along the top of the two pieces of fabric and then I sewed the bias tape on after that. So. Yeah, I made two lots to put on two of our windows in our house and my daughter's a big fan of pink so I'm hoping she'll like them and hopefully we'll be able to use them again in the future or maybe she might like them hanging up in her room. I don't know but it was a fun little project and in a moment I will show you how they look hung up on one of our windows in case you're interested. So yeah, if you haven't given bunting a go, probably everyone else in the world has tried bunting except for me but if you haven't given it a go, it's, it's quite a nice satisfying quick little project. Um, yeah, quite quite enjoyed that one. So that's my non sort of garment making project that I've been doing over the last few days but I've also been working on a garment and if you saw my video last weekend which was my um what was it my um February fabric haul and sewing plans video and I'll link it in case you haven't seen it you'll know I got a new pattern magazine and it's this one here it is the fiber mood magazine um, issue number 16 and it's my first fiber mood magazine and I was really excited to try it so they've got some really lovely patterns in here and I wanted to get started straight away with one of the patterns that I thought would be perfect for this kind of weather as we get a little bit milder but it's still a bit of a chill in the air and I am making let me find it where is it I'm making this garment here it is the Irma body warmer so it's a really I should show you the line drawings here it's a really nice kind of boxy shaped body warmer and then you make a tie to sort of bring it in around the waist and it's got patch pockets on the front. You can add these extra sort of um, sort of wings, I guess they are almost on the sleeves here, but I'm just going for a straightforward version without those extra pieces there because I wanted more of a classic shape. And you can make it with sort of by quilting the fabric or you can make it using pre-quilted fabric or yeah, anything like that. It's designed to be unlined, but I'm going to make my version lined. So I'm kind of just in the process of making it at the moment. Um, and my version is really inspired by a version I saw on Instagram, which was made by Alexis, who is My Sweet Sunshine, and I'll link her down below. And she made a lovely version in a Merchant and Mills cotton jacquard fabric. And I thought it was really beautiful. I thought I'd really like to make one for myself. She made one in a black square print jacquard fabric for Merchant and Mills. But I've gone for a different jacquard fabric, another Merchant and Mills one. And I really enjoy working with the Merchant and Mills jacquard fabric. I made my Hovier jacket in it a few weeks back and I really love the fabric it's so lovely and squishy and soft and really yeah, really nice so so I got this um colorway here which is the Ahoy colorway so it's this really pretty blue color and it's got a sort of diamond shape on it and this cotton jacquard fabric it looks quilted but it's not actually quilted it's sort of layers of um cotton thread sort of squished together so I, as you can see I've overlocked around all the edges of this piece that I've cut out before I even start sewing it to any other pieces because once you cut the edges the um, little cotton threads that are inside do you want to try and escape. So yeah, my um, is in progress and I'm going to line it and I've got some fabric to line it with and I've got this, um, uh, what's it called? Flannel fabric, which I got from Minerva along with the um, cotton jacquard. So it's this really nice kind of soft sort of, yeah, sort of felty flannel fabric. Um, it's an art gallery flannel fabric. It's quite pricey but I didn't need too much of it. You don't need too much of this pattern so that was good. And actually the colour match has come out really well. I'm really happy with how those colours go together. So that's what I'm going to line it with. So I'm kind of just in the process now of figuring out how I do line it. 
Um, but yes, yeah, so that's my plan. <laughs> um, but I'll show you a little bit how I've got on so far. I've cut out all the pieces of the cotton jacquard and the lining fabric. And so far I've added on the pockets to the front. So there's a patch pocket. And I'll show you inside the pocket. I've added on the lining fabric and the little sort of facing at the top. So I'm quite pleased with how that looks. I think it's quite neat on the inside and should make quite a nice practical pocket. I thought I'd also mention a couple of other things about my experience so far with the Fibre Mood magazine and the Irma pattern. So the Fibre Mood magazine has a really good size range and um, it goes from a size 4 to a size 32. And I had to look at the size range and um, for what I wanted to go for with Irma and I found I fall into the extra small size range. So the extra small size covers sizes 4 and 6 and I was more on the size 6 side. I think my hip, me hip measurements might have been right at the top of the size 6 side. But when I had a look at the finished garment measurements and had a look at other people's experience of sewing the Irma body warmer, it did seem like it came up a bit on the oversized size, so I thought it was better to size down rather than to move up to the next size band up. And I'm quite glad I read the magazine fairly thoroughly because I didn't realise at first that when you buy the magazine itself, the paper pattern pieces inside come without seam allowances. So luckily i noticed that in time to add the seam allowances um yeah that's just a bit i'm not used to that actually and apparently if you download the pdf versions of the patterns they do include the seam allowances it's just the magazine itself apparently that has yeah the seam allowances not included i guess it's so they can squeeze quite a lot of patterns into a small space on a piece of paper so i guess it makes sense from that perspective but i'm not used to adding the seam allowances but it was fine they do show you how to add the seam allowances and which seams you need to add them to so it is quite clear what you need to do but on the whole, the instructions for the Irma are quite fairly limited in the magazine. But I also understand as well that there are more detailed instructions online on the Fibre Move website. So I might go and take a look at that too. A couple of people have mentioned that. So thank you for mentioning that. It's really good to know. So yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying giving one of these patterns a go and giving Fibre Mood a go. And I'm really hoping the body warm will be, be a really useful item on my wardrobe. I've got a gilet that's quite thick that I often wear in the winter. But that's um, filled with down, so it's really like a thick, cosy one. I think this one will be a really bit of a lighter weight one. But I'm hoping it'll be great to throw on over a pair of jeans and top just if I'm dashing out on the school run and that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to sewing up and seeing how the sizing goes. Um, I haven't made any adjustments. I've gone for a straight size, extra small. When I had a look at the length, it looked like there was plenty of length, so I haven't added any length on. So I'm just going to see how it goes and have a bit of fun trying that pattern. Oh, and I just spotted this picture of uh, the um, on the back. This is the picture that really inspired me to sew the um, body warmer in the first place. And then when I saw Alexis' version, I was totally sold. I love this yellow colour. I'm not sure whether it's a colour I could get away with, hence I've gone for the blue. But I think it's really pretty. And you can see the um, if you make it unlined, it's got this bias binding detail around, which is really pretty too. Because I'm making a lot aligned version, I won't have that detail around the front. But I do like that. And if I get on well making this version, maybe at some point I would try another version with the bias binding as well. I do really like the idea at some point as well of trying quilting my own fabric. I haven't ever done any quilting in the past. It's not something I've got experience of. So that might be quite fun to try at some point in the future. But yeah, I'm really enjoying giving this magazine a try. And there are a couple of other patterns I've got my eye on in here too. So I'm partway through um, that. And then I got a little bit sidetracked. I'm not doing very well at sticking with one project at the moment. I've got a few different things on the go. The other thing I'm in the middle of starting as well is this pattern here, which is the Plateau Joggers pattern by Closet Core Patterns. And if you've seen some of my recent vlogs, you'll know that I've been working on the Mile End sweatshirt also by Closet Core Patterns. I bought both patterns for Christmas and they're kind of part of a set, part of the Montreal collection. And I really enjoyed making the Mile End sweatshirt. And I'll be talking more about that one in my video coming up this weekend. I'll be sharing my January sewing makes and I'll be talking all about my Mile End sweatshirt in that video. But I really enjoyed making it and I wanted to make myself a matching set of joggers to go with my Mile End sweatshirt. So that is my plan. I've got some really nice um, lilac fleece back sweatshirting fabric. I haven't got it here. I'll try and show you in a moment that fabric that I'm planning to make these joggers using. So I've got to the point where now I've started to... Um, trace out all the pieces I need for this pattern. I've had a look at the sizing, decided what size I am. This pattern has a really good size range on it, actually. Um, there are two size bands. I've got the size 0 to 20 size band, and there's also a size 14 to 32 size band. But I was conscious when I was looking at the sizing that the fabric I have hasn't got a load of stretch to it, so I definitely didn't want to size down at all. I wanted to make sure there was enough room in there for me to be able to move about easily because the fabric isn't really stretchy because it's quite a fleecy, thick fabric. So I think I have gone for the waist measurement. I think I might have gone for a size six, the waist of 27 inches and the hips of 36 inches. Because when I was looking 
at the sizing instructions of this pattern, it said go with your hips measurement. My waist measurement is one size down from that, but it said if your waist measurement is within a couple of sizes, just go with your hips measurement because you can always bring in the waist with the elastic anyway, so the waist isn't quite as critical. So I have traced out the pattern pieces and now I'm at the stage where I want to make a few adjustments before I cut the fabric out. And I want to kind of compare the pattern pieces to my True Bias Hudson Pants pattern pieces to see how they compare and what adjustments I need to make because I've got the Hudson Pants pieces just adjusted just right to fit me now. So I thought if I compare them, that'll be a good plan before I start cutting into my fabric. So while I'm on, I thought I'd also share with you a little update on my latest knitting project. So if you saw my February um, sewing plans and fabric haul video at the weekend, then you'll know that I also shared in there a few items I got for my birthday because my birthday was in January. And one thing I got for my birthday was a knitting kit. And I got a knitting kit by Wool and the Gang and it's the Coco Sailor Sweater Kit. It's a really nice slouchy, stri stripy jumper kit, sweater kit. And it's knitted in there, shiny, happy cotton yarn. And I really like that yarn. I've made one other garment using it. I made their saltwater sweater kit um, about a year or so ago. It's a really lovely yarn to work with and I find it really nice and soft on my skin. And this sweater is knitted with a quite a loose weave, this Coco Sailor sweater. And I've chosen the colours and I thought I'd just share with you how I'm getting on with it. It's a really fun knit out actually and it's coming together quite quickly because you knit it on 8mm needles. So it's quite, yeah, quite chunky needles. So here is um, one of my pieces coming together. So you can see the colours I chose. So my sweater is going to be in this um, deep red colour which is called True Blood Red and the white, white colour which is called White Noise. So here's my stripy piece and it's been really nice knitting actually because it's stocking stitch. It's quite a nice one to knit in front of the television on an evening without having to think about it too much. So yeah, it's coming together really nicely and the wool's lovely and drapey. I think it'll make a really nice drapey, relaxed, summery sort of sweater. So yeah, I'm enjoying knitting that one and I'll update you further on how I'm getting on that with that one in my future um, midweek sewing catch-ups. But I thought what I'd do now is um, I thought I'd put my bunting up on the window and then I'd just take a little video of that so you can see how that looks. And then I thought I'd get the camera um, in the um, other room where I'm going to get my sewing table ready. And I thought I'd share with you how I've gone making the adjustments on my plateau joggers before I start cutting that fabric out. And I'll show you the fabric too. So I'll leave you here and I'll see you in a moment in the other room. Bye. So here is my bunting up on the window. <laughs> As you can see it there. And I've attached little ties at each end so it's quite easy to pop on. But oops, at least step back on some toys there. So... I think it looks quite pretty. Hopefully my daughter will like it. Hello, I hope you enjoyed seeing the bunting there um, in situ on the window. I think it looks quite nice, so hopefully my daughter will like it. Um, I've now got my pattern piece out for the plateau joggers and I've compared them to the Hudson pants and I've made a few adjustments to the plateau joggers. So I thought I'd turn the camera around and show you those pattern pieces and what adjustments I've made. And I thought I'd also share with you the fabric I'm using to make those joggers. So I'll turn the camera around and show you those things. See you in a moment. Hi there, I thought in the end I decided to set up my tripod and um, be on the camera as well. So I thought it'd be easier to hold up the fabric and pattern pieces and show you that way. So that's why I'm here <laughs> instead of turning the camera around. Um, but I thought I'd show you the fabric that I'm using for my plateau joggers and also the pattern pieces and the adjustments I've made. So first of all, the fabric I'm using is this really, really lovely fleece back sweater shirting fabric that I got from Minerva. It is a Mind the Maker fabric. And it's got a really lovely fleecy back. It's really substantial. It hasn't got the most stretch ever because it's so thick and cosy. But the Plateau um, Jogging Bottoms pattern does say that you don't need fabrics with a huge amount of stretch. I think it says 15% is enough. And it recommends fabrics like polar fleece and things. So I think this fabric will be absolutely fine. But I got it in this lovely lilac colourway and I've got the matching ribbing fabric too. I do like that these Mind the Maker fleece back sweatshirt fabrics come with the matching ribbing. I like that you can get that as well. And I thought I'd mention actually I'll link these fabrics and all the other fabrics I mentioned in the video below as well as the patterns. I think I realised earlier I didn't mention where this fabric came from that I used to make my pinafore. This Rifle Paper um, Co cotton came from Lamazi Fabrics and I think it's still available and I'll link it down below in case you want to check it out in the blue colourway too which is quite pretty. But yeah it's all linked down below in the description. But yeah this is the fabric I'm planning to use. I'm planning to use ribbing for the cuffs on the ankles. There are two options given in the plateau joggers. You can either use ribbing for the cuffs of the ankles or you can use the fabric itself and then make an elastic channel and put elastic in. And I do like that option as well, but I've got enough ribbing and I quite like to use what I have of the ribbing. I do quite like the look of a ribbing on a cuff. So I'm going to use that. So I don't need to make any adjustments to the bottom cuff piece because this ribbing has got loads of stretch to go over my ankles. 
And then I've got this fabric and it's already been cut out actually because I use this fabric to make my mile end sweatshirt also by Closet Core Patterns. And one of the reasons I thought I'd go for this fabric for matching joggers is because I have quite a lot of it left over from the mile end sweatshirt. I didn't use as much as it said you needed. So I didn't need to buy too much extra to make the joggers. So it's quite nice to be using what I have with just an extra little bit to top me up to get the joggers cut out. So that is the fabric I'm using and I really actually like this lilac colour. I don't have a lot of lilac in my wardrobe, but I think it's a really pretty colour. But there are loads of really pretty colours in this fabric, so it's quite hard to choose when I first decided to make the Mylon sweatshirt out of it. So that's that, and then I thought I'd show you the adjustments I've made to the pattern pieces. So I had a look at these pattern pieces and compared them to the Hudson Pants pattern pieces. And the first thing I noticed was the leg is definitely designed to be a looser leg. The Hudson Pants is quite a narrow leg style. This one, there's definitely a bit more room in it. So that's quite good. Um, I think it'll be a bit of a different style to the Hudson Pants. It'll be nice to have something a bit different, a bit more roomy in the leg. And it'll work well for this thicker fabric. And I had a compare and I think I needed to increase the length of these slightly because I often need to lengthen the legs of things. And I have done on the Hudson Pants pattern. So the first adjustment I made was I just added in an inch and a half at the length and a shorten line on the leg of the pattern, as you can see there. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing I did. And then I also decided to lengthen the crotch slightly. So I've lengthened the crotch here. There's another length and short line in the pattern and I use that here and I had to just smooth out these lines down the side to make sure they're still um, yeah, nice and smooth. And I lengthened the crotch by an inch because when I looked at this pattern compared to the Hudson Pants pattern, it didn't look like there was a huge difference in the kind of crotch room there. And I quite like the idea of making these a little bit more high waisted. So I thought if I add in an extra inch, I'll definitely make sure that they're a little bit higher waisted on me. And then I also added on an extra half an inch just right at the top here, just to make sure they are definitely coming up to my waist. I thought if I add it on the top here, it'll be quite easy then to just take it off later if I decide that they end up coming up to like here and they're far too high. So I've done a few length and lines at different points in the pattern. It was quite straightforward to do. There was a little bit of adjustment needed up down this side because there's this sort of funny bit on the back piece with this sort of little jutting out piece. I think it forms part of the pocket. So I had to kind of move that up. But the pattern takes you through how to do it. There's quite a lot of instructions in the pattern envelope about how you make these adjustments. That's quite handy. So I'm really looking forward to giving these a go. This is quite an interesting shape here, I think, how the back leg pattern piece has this bit here. I'm not sure how it all comes together. I know that on the pattern envelope it mentions it's quite an interesting pocket detail, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it sews up. So I think today I might get started on cutting out this fabric so it's ready to sew at some point quite soon, while the weather is still on the chilly side. So I think I might get going on that in the moment. All the fabric is pre-washed and ready to go, so that'd be quite nice to have a little cutting out session there. So I think I'll probably finish this video now and get on with that cutting out and um, that'll be my little sewing activity today. So thank you so much for joining me for this um, episode of my midweek sewing chat. It was really nice to share some of my sewing plans with you. I hope you are having a lovely week too and maybe get to fit a bit of crafting in as well. I do think it is really um, a lovely mindful activity. So if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then thanks so much for tuning in. I would love it if you would consider subscribing. And if you press the bell icon, then you'll be notified when my future videos come out. And my next video will be this Saturday. It's going to be my January makes video. So I'll be talking about my Mylan sweatshirt that's also in this fabric. And I've got a few other makes to share with you in that too. And a knitting project as well that I completed in January. So I would love it if you would check that video out too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye.